What's up guys, it's Lenny, your fan of stuff too, and today I'm coming at you with my wind-up deck profile, finally! But, uh, well, we're gonna do this deck profile a little bit differently than normal deck profiles. I'm not gonna tell you every single card in the deck, because you can see it on the screen, it's all right over here. Uh, if you don't know a card, uh, you can ask if you really need and I'll post it. Or, actually, you know what, I'll just post like a list in the description in case you can't read any of the cards. I'll just post a big-ass list and it'll tell you everything. But what I want to do is I want to talk about two uh, main things in this deck. So the first thing I want to talk about changes you can make to the deck and then the second thing I want to talk about uh, the reason the deck is even playable. So the first thing is changes you can make to the deck. The deck space is extremely tight. Everything in the deck is there for a reason and everything is there for a very particular situation and puts you in, is for the uh, and gives you the most consistent possibilities. Now the only card I haven't tested or one of the only cards I haven't tested uh, that I think can fit in the deck maybe possibly can fit in the deck that can make this deck much better is Exodius the Ultimate Forbidden Lord. Now the reason why is because we're running Radiant and Radiant is dead in your opening hands unless you open Allure. Uh, if you go first and you open Radiant, the reason why it's okay is because you could just Allure him away and cycle him to other cards. And if anything, if you already have your combo, you just use him as so you could chain Firewall to Firewall. Or you could just pitch him with Scorpio. So I'm thinking you could do the same thing with Exodius the Forbidden Lord because he's a dark monster, but I haven't had time to test him. Now the reason I'm thinking Exodius is uh, is in his own category here is because he uh, is a, a card that we can put anyways, is because he shuffles your whole graveyard back into the deck, cards into the extra deck, everything. So if you end with like a bunch of firewalls and stuff, and you have firewall bounces, uh, you can bounce back rats and then summon the rats by linking the firewalls for some random proxy dragon at the end, and then bring something ba bring back a magician with the rat, uh, or you bounce back like one rat and a shark, and then you bring back Magician with the rat, you summon shark, and then you bounce everything back into the extra deck, into the main deck, and then you re-combo again to get out like another crazy board after you already hand-looped him, just so you can like redo a bunch of stupid shit. Uh, so that's why I'm thinking Exodius could have a, a, a slot in the main deck, but I'm not sure still, because I haven't tested him, so that's the only card we're not sure of. Now the reason the deck is playable at all, uh, sorry, the other two cards that are uh, that are interchangeable, uh, this Veiler can be a Ghost Ogre, but you absolutely need the second light monster, because one light monster in the entire deck isn't enough for Brilliant Fusion, so you absolutely need the second light monster, but you want it to be a hand trap so you can do things with it if you draw it. So that's why it's Veiler or Ghost Ogre. Then you have the second Summoner Monk that's changeable, which I think I'm actually going to change the second Summoner Monk for Exodius, possibly. That's what I think I'm going to end up doing. Uh, and then the Upstart Goblin is the other card you could change for an extra Hand Trap or whatever you want, honestly. Now, the reason the deck is even playable is not because of Zenmaicon. You have to understand this, it's very important. Zenmaicon isn't the reason the deck is playable. Zenmaicon lets you combo extend, which makes your combos infinitely better, of course. Zenmaicon is an amazing card, I'm never going to say it's not. But what I'm saying is, Zenmaicon isn't the reason you can combo in the first place. The reason you can combo in the first place is Cherubini and Summon Sorceress. These two cards let you do crazy shit, because Cherubini is a fairy for some reason, and it lets you dump level 3s, and it's generic. So you just Scorpio into Cobra, Cobra gets you Brilliant Fusion, you link the Cobra and the Scorpio for a Cherubini, Cherubini dumps your rat, then you get to Brilliant Fuse after that, summoning Trick Clown from your deck because you dump it and it summons itself, So, and that's a Spellcaster into one of the pointers, and then you summon Seraphonite, you do your extra normal summon, and then you link Seraphonite plus your Cherubini for a Summon Sorceress because for some reason Seraphonite and Cherubini are both fairies, and Summon Sorceress requires two monsters of the same type that aren't tokens. And then for some reason Trick Clown is a Spellcaster, so you can just target the Trick Clown with Summon Sorceress and summon Magician from your deck, and then link with it, and then rat it back, or do some other thing to bring it back, because this deck has a lot of uh, ways to bring shit out from the grave. You double Ire Sunrise and Rat, plus you're dumping a rat, so your Ires are always live if you have Scorpio in hand. Like, it's just a, some crazy-ass shit you can do with this deck. Uh, now, I wanted to show you guys two combos. Uh, it's the, These are the, the, the two new big combos I came up with. These combos are actually godlike. It's um, the Rat Scorpio combo and the, sorry, the Rat Scorpio plus Monster combo and then the Rat Scorpio double Monster combo. So now what I mean by Rat Scorpio double Monster or one Monster is uh, Rat and Scorpio are the two cards you need in your hand. And then if you open any single other monster in your deck except Garnet, uh, you can hand loop your opponent for five cards. Now if you open two monsters that aren't uh, absolutely terrible, like, uh, I don't even know what would be absolutely terrible, uh, I guess like Garnet or Double Cobra or something like that, if you open two monsters, well, you can hand loop your opponent for five cards and you can steal their extra monster zone with a Dweller. Uh, otherwise, with the, with the three card version, you can either hand loop for five 
or hand loop for four and steal their extra monsters on where to dwell there. So you have like less options, but the five one lets you do like uh, the, the, fi the five card plus stealing the extra monster is obviously better. So that's the one you would typically want to go for more. Uh, the deck is actually insane. It does some crazy ass shit and I want to show you those two combos. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember to comment down below. Uh, tell me what you think about the deck. Tell me how much you've been testing it and how inconsistent it actually is and how retarded I am. Or tell me how like good it actually is and holy shit, it, Hunter should be banned more and more and more. Just tell me what you guys think. Obviously, I love comments. The entire reason I made this video was because someone commented, can you make a wind-up deck profile? So then I was like, no, the, de the deck is shit. And then I spent like, like in my head, I was like, no, the deck is shit. And then I spent like literally like 15 hours just like constantly testing new shit looking at new shit because i really wanted the deck to be good and then i finally made the deck and it's pretty good so uh thank you guys for watching and i hope you guys enjoy the combo Till I get up, time is barely on our side. I don't wanna waste what's left. The storms we chase are leading. 